Hello and welcome to the Monday, November 14th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In this weekend's diary, Didier yet again looks at CyberChef and how to do new and interesting things with CyberChef. In this particular case, analyzing, well, uh, pretty much sort of standard uh, syslog data. He calls it log format. If you ever looked, for example, at IP tables log in uh, syslog, you will sort of recognize this format where you have sort of a field value equals and then uh, the actual value going with that field name. Now, the trick here that they use with CyberChef is how do you actually analyze large amounts of data inside the browser and uh, what Didier does is he actually uploads a zip file then has CyberChef unzip it and then analyze it. Personally, I'll probably stick with uh, tools like cut and crep for uh, these kind of logs, but interesting approach in particular, the idea of uh, processing larger files in CyberChef. By the way, if you ever wonder stuff about the privacy issues with uh, CyberChef, you can actually run it pretty easily uh, on premise, so to speak, by just downloading the JavaScript and if you are using CyberChef from the uh, GitHub site, everything should uh, run in your browser anyway. And well, in a couple of uh, weeks, uh, the uh, Soccer World Cup uh, will be taking off. And uh, with that, of course, there are already a couple of sort of uh, security related uh, issues around this. First of all, if you are actually going uh, to uh, Qatar in order uh, to visit any of the live games, there is some interesting COVID-19 tracking and uh, ticket applications that you need to download. Usually recommended to install things like this on a burner phone. Also, there are already a number of scams going around according to some new sites, uh, like for example, fake uh, ticket scams, uh, lottery scams and the like. Well, uh, as usual, any big event like this is going to attract some scammers, phishing and uh, malicious emails and all of the good stuff. Uh, so uh, be careful and uh, maybe good in particular if you're living in a country that is uh, more into uh, soccer or football uh, to uh, actually do a little awareness uh, email or uh, session about uh, the risks around uh, this World Cup. And one of the big weaknesses in the TLS ecosystem has historically been certificate authorities. And uh, we had a couple sort of high profile cases where certificate authorities uh, were removed from the list of commonly trusted authorities, like, uh, for example, uh, Symantec, uh, Star TLS, or WoSign, sort of are some of the largest authorities that are no longer being trusted. The latest uh, certificate authority that's uh, causing some concerns here is Trust Core Systems. Now, probably you haven't heard of this company before, at least I haven't, but according uh, to an article by Joseph Men in the Washington Post, Trust Core is uh, one company that not only has a trusted authority that's included in pretty much all browsers, but also ties to the US government, uh, where it is offering also interception and uh, spyware tools. Now, the company itself also isn't really all that transparent uh, with sort of using various uh, mailbox addresses and not really having sort of much of a public uh, physical footprint anywhere. In the end, not much you can do about it, uh, but the scrutiny around sort of authorities has become uh, sort of tighter in recent years. In particular, Google has been driving a lot of this. And uh, one of the protections against any invalid certificates uh, being issued are certificate transparency logs, where certificate authorities have to publish any certificates that they're issuing. I always recommend that you monitor the certificate transparency logs for any certificates that show up for one of the domain names that you manage and, well, that may not be uh, authorized by you. 
In the last couple years, uh, one of the uh, standard uh, breaches that we uh, have seen over and over is sort of your ransomware scam, where then also uh, the attacker is holding the data a ransom in the sense that uh, they're trying to extort you not to release the data. Well, it uh, looks like there's now a group of uh, copycat attackers that call themselves the Monsanto uh, group that are sending fake messages uh, to website owners claiming that they have breached the sites and stolen the data and they're now requesting uh, $2,500 in uh, Bitcoin as a ransom. Overall, the emails look very similar to some of these extortion scams and such uh, that we have seen uh, where uh, someone makes some unfounded claims that uh, they uh, breached your personal computer. So it looks like they're now just going after a little bit sort of more professional crowd that runs uh, websites. Nothing to worry about if you're receiving one of those emails. Uh, they are fake and, uh, well, your data has not been stolen. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.